a tutorial that I've had uh, requested, uh, I think a couple times, is what to do about channels that just aren't coming through. Like what if, you know, you're not hearing sound that you want to be hearing? Like how do you fix that? How do you troubleshoot that? Um, well, unfortunately, um, that question could have many, many, many different answers depending on what it is that's going wrong. Um, so I'm going to kind of try to walk you through um, kind of the, the signal chain or the, the f signal flow um, for, let's just say, the acoustic guitar up there. And hopefully that'll give you some ideas for how you can troubleshoot the issue if it ever arises. All right, so think of audio signal um, coming from, in this case, that acoustic guitar up there. Think of it like um, maybe a bunch of hoses or pipes uh, connected at different various connectors or junctions that go from all the way up there in the guitar through all the machinery back there um, and then in the wiring overhead popping back and feeding into this board which then gets fed from the board to the outputs of the board back up to the front where they have the uh, amplifiers which are then connected to the speakers um, that actually produce the sound. So if there is any of those many, many pipes or junctions that are off or not working or set incorrectly, any of those factors can cause you to not receive signal. So as you can see between uh, the guitar and the speakers making the noise, there are a lot of intermediate parts. Um, and so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by going to the guitar where the signal, uh, and when I say signal, I'm not talking about radio or anything crazy like the, I'm not even getting into the wireless channels because that's a whole nother mess. Definitely not my favorite thing. When I say signal, I just mean the noise that you're wanting to hear. So in this case, it's the guitar um, making noise into the system. Okay, so if the guitar is not making sound, um, it could be one of the following things. Let's start at the source, the guitar itself. It could be, well, as you can see, it's, uh, <laughs> there's no cable uh, connected, so that's a big problem. But on the guitar itself, the thing that makes the sound is the, the pickup. Um, and you have your pickup controls here on the side of this guitar. Um, it's powered by a battery, so you need to make sure the battery is uh, making power, meaning this thing lights up on the side if you push a button, so it shows that there's some sort of power in there. Um, there's also volume controls on this, so it could be the volume control. You wanna make sure the volume is up on all these things. All right, so that's the units on the guitar that should make noise. Then on the bottom of this instrument, you've got um, where the cable actually plugs in and carries the sound through. Right, I'm gonna plug that guy in. So it could be that the cable's not fully connected. So that's our first, or second, I don't even <laughs> That's our first departure from the instrument itself. So you want to make sure the, can, the cable is seated correctly. Um, it could also be that the cable, the instrument cable itself is no good um, and needs to be replaced. So that's another variable in the chain. Now, the signal goes from the guitar and its internal electronics down through this cable as an electrical signal and it goes into a direct box. Now this particular direct box, you see it's labeled active, which means it requires phantom power. So you need to make sure that the direct box has phantom power. We can actually go over to right before the direct box. We wanna make sure this cable is connected strongly. And again, it could be this cable itself is not good. Anyway, so um, we know that this box is getting phantom power because it has that little red light down there. Um, if it were not getting phantom power, that red light would not be on. Okay, so this thing's getting power, we're good there. The next phase, or the next, I don't know, hose or, <laughs> or pipe carrying our electrical, but in this case, metaphorical water uh, signal, is going from this cable, make sure that's nice and seated correctly, into, let's see, it's got the blue tape on it. It's a short cable. So it's going from there. See, this is where it'd be helpful for me to have done. Okay, looks like it's going into this stage pocket here, number six. 
So it could be this microphone cable going into this stage um, connection pocket here going to six. All right, from there, um, there's another cable inside this plate that carries that electrical signal to the back room, to our patch bay. So it could be the cable. And one way you can eliminate whether it's an issue is if you swap out the cable for a new one. If that doesn't fix it, there's a good likelihood that the problem is elsewhere. Or heaven forbid, if the problem is in two locations at once. If two things are bad in the signal chain, then we're in trouble. Okay, so let's go to patch number six back here. This is where our guitar is flowing through our signal set of pipes and all that stuff. All right, on the back patch bay, these little numbers up top tell you uh, this one, three, five, seven, nine. Those are the numbers on the stage. So we wanna find number six on the stage, which would be one, two, three, four, five. Below five, we pull that out. Whoa, that fell down. So, oh, this is channel six going back to the, um, the X32. Uh, the, um, the soundboard. So, like I said, these printed paper numbers represent the connectors on the stage, and then these cables represent what's going back to the X32. So this is taking the sound from the stage that you plugged in, and it's sending it back to the booth. So we have channel six here. Um, now, if one of these actual cables were bad, um, then that'd be very bad. I have not had that happen, um, but it could happen. Um, more likely to happen is that one of these uh, patch bay connectors is no good. Um, so another option would be to switch from channel six on the stage, maybe to channel eight on the stage or channel three on the stage, and just see if another patch bay connection works better. Okay, so then it goes into channel six. I'm gonna put that back where it was channel six on the patch bay. So now what's happening is this uh, this snake or whatever, these uh, connections are then going back into the wall up above and we can follow it all the way along the ceiling, which if you ever want to get in there and uh, run some cables up there in the ceiling above the sanctuary, good luck. It will, it's a real quad workout because you gotta crouch the whole time up there. Anyway, it feeds down the back wall, comes up underneath the floor of the sound booth, and brings us back to, let's see, that number was six. So it's channel six on the soundboard. Now, um, you know which, um, which channel is feeding all these because it has like this A on it, so A1, so whatever, um, Whatever cable back there has a one on it, that's channel one on the board. A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, 8, 9, and 10. That takes care of a lot of the instruments. But now you notice here, when you get to the wireless channels, you've got N17, N18, N19. That's because the wireless channels are actually coming in the actual physical back panel uh, in 17 through 22 in the XLR inputs. These A numbers represent what, um, like the snake input that they're using um, with the, the numbers we saw in the back room on those cables sticking into the patch bay. So all the wireless channels are actually microphone cable directly plugged in on the back panel. If we go to the second set, you'll notice like the kick drum is channel 17. So you think, oh, I'm looking for the cable with a 17 on it. Nope. If you look really closely, oh boy, this is gonna be tricky. <laughs> We've got A11, A12, and A13. That means, oh, that means uh, the drums are coming in channel 11, back there, the cable with the 11 on it, the 12, and the 13, um, those are feeding channel 17, 18, and 19. I know that's very confusing. Um, so channel 17 is being fed by snake 11, the A, 12, and 13. 
Channel 15 is feeding the ambient mic, which happens to be here on channel 20. And channel 16 is feeding the click, which happens to be here at 21 on the board. Okay, so that's a little confusing. Um, all right, so let's go back to where we were with this guitar. So the guitar is coming in on channel six. That means we can check here to make sure it's not muted. We can check to make sure it has phantom power. Let me actually select the channel here. There we go. So it's got phantom power. You, it may also be the gain that needs to be increased. Um, there could be any number of things happening inside the board that is um, needs to be adjusted. Thankfully, on the Sunday morning scene, the routing should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's since we've had this set up, it's been very rare that we would see an issue beyond this point. Um, everything should be, like I said, 99.9, .9, maybe even more, <laughs> percent of the time. There's something with the signal getting from the stage back to the soundboard. Um, so like I said, you got cables that you can check along the way. Um, you've got like direct boxes or other instrument components that could be at play. Um, the only way to really diagnose and fix the problem is to, one, understand how the signal is getting back here, and then two, isolating the different components of that signal chain and seeing where the problem lies, where, um, let's say, our, our series of hoses and pipes are, are disconnected or, or leaking or whatever it is you want to use in that metaphor. Okay, now lastly, um, the sound is traveling from here back to the back room where we have the amplifiers which are then connected to the speakers. Now, if something were wrong on that end of the signal flow, you would definitely know it because the speakers would not be making noise. If you have an issue where the, the amplifiers aren't powering on or they appear to be on but the speakers aren't making noise, then you know that the issue is something with all this hardware back in there in which case um, it's going to take um, more specialized attention. But if the speakers are making noise for everything except for a choice instrument or a choice microphone, then it is likely that the issue is in one of these components here on stage. So um, guitars follow a very similar pattern to what I just showed you. Bass guitars, same thing. Um, vocal microphones are a little simpler in the sense that you can switch out the microphone, you can switch out the microphone cable, you can switch out the channel that it's coming into on the, the, the patch bay, and that is about all you would need. Those are all the main components for a microphone. Um, drums operate via microphones, so it's very, you can treat them almost like the vocal microphones. It might be the mic, it might be the cable, it might be the patch uh, that it's using to get back to um, the room. So check out those things. Um, if it has a volume control, make sure the volume is on or turned on. And those are some preliminary first tips to hopefully address uh, instruments that aren't making sound.